So we are live again for another soul therapy uh, class. So this is really <laughs> fun for us. We were just talking about how uh, we neither one of us really struggle with this. So there you have it. <laughs> we're just going to put that out there. We were just talking about it. Um, but uh, we thought that that is more of a reason why we're doing what we're doing um, because we want to help um, the body to break the cycle of procrastination. So when this may be a strength, but trust and believe we have other areas that are weaknesses, but we're sharing our strengths with you um, so <laughs> that you can all grow. So welcome to the um, Soul Therapy breaking the cycle of procrastination. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we will say welcome again um, here welcome. soon because I know that you are just coming on. So as we're starting the levels of procrastination, um, yay, somebody's typing in the chat already and I love it, I love it, I love it. So even if you're watching the replay, make sure that you type in the chat. We read every single message, right? Because um, we're excited too to be able to serve, to be able to even say something like, you know what? I examined my life and God has been faithful in that area yes. of keeping me motivated and keeping me um, excited about kingdom assignments. So that's why we're here. So are you one, a non-procrastinator? You do your work early. You get it done. That's what we were talking about. We are number ones. Um, or are you the sun Sunday night slacker? You slack all weekend chilling, vibing, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> all weekend. You can type this in the chat too, whether you're one, two, three, or four, um, and, or you are number three, a super slacker where um, you got all kinds of stuff that you got going on. And you say that you love working under pressure. That's what you say. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but maybe that is a thing for you. I don't know. <laughs> no uh, judgment. Are you a number not here at all. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so that's Siobhan here. For, are you a number one, two, or three? And then number four, um, master procrastinator. You're still procrastinating after the deadline. So the deadline has already passed, and this is you uh, either typing a message because you know we live in a, a technology <laughs> age, uh, sending an email, uh, making a phone call, saying, can I get an extension? So which one are you? One, two, three three or four. So um, feel free to type it in the chat because if you have some of the problems that we uh, are going to talk about, then you know that in order to keep your attention, you got to interact, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to interact. Otherwise you moved on to the next class. If you are into this kind yes, of thing yes, yes. <laughs> or um, <laughs> you talk, you yelling at the kids, you done. So if you don't interact with us, um, then we will know that you are not paying attention. So it looks like uh, we got another person saying, hey, everybody, hey, <laughs> we got that's that's my husband. I can't see who it is because you have to give StreamYard permission. So that's my husband. So the team is here, it looks like, or at least a portion of people. So Siobhan, um, she, you'll see her when we get to um, the, the team uh, slide. And then my husband, um, you'll see him, Minister um, Charles. Um, and then it looks like we're typing twos, we're typing threes, we're typing all the numbers, one, two, three, and four. Um, as far as where you are um, in the chat. So um, I get it though, because you could fluctuate between maybe if you really are excited about it, you are number one, you own it and it's done. But if you're not, then you're number two. Um, or if you're stressed out in your life, which we are going to talk about, you know, we always got to talk about stress and trauma. That's what we do. Um, so number three, it could be that you got a lot going on. So it may not be just you um, having a habit of it. It's just that you have a lot going on. But if you notice a pattern, then you are a number four. Awareness is the first step to change. So I always like to um, <laughs> say something, something yes. so that you are um, aware of where you are, right? Because when yes. God reveals, he heals. Um, he takes you to that next level. So um, it's not a big deal if you are a number four. It's okay because God is greater than procrastination. <laughs> okay. Um, so thank you for those that answered in the chat, whether you're one, two, three, or four. Um, we already answered. We're we're both pretty much ones. Uh, yeah, we're ones all day. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Let me sit, let me take two seats. 
um, because I, I need to humble myself before God does it. So let's talk about um, more in you coaching. So what we are is a faith-based life coaching and training organization. So we do these monthly trainings here. Um, this is one of the many things that we do, but we also offer life coaching, mentoring, support groups to help believers heal and develop confidence to pursue their purpose. And our purpose is to provide resources. So we love to, uh, I know it's in the Facebook group. So if you missed it, um, then it should be in a featured section. If you can't find something, I know it's not on the uh, more. This is one area I've procrastinated on. Um, <laughs> I have not put the uh, digital resources on the website. So a lot of the stuff is in the group, but it's not on the website. So um i love to be transparent and i love to keep it real so uh, but that's what we do is provide resources um so you know i'm always like posting um a link to an assessment you can do or maybe we got a, a workbook or different things like that but we love offering practical support to help you develop um spiritual uh, maturity and then also um, emotional resilience so you can get through what you're going through. And it's our hope for people to be healed from trauma. So that's why we always talk about trauma um, at the start, trauma, stress, something like that at the very beginning of our trainings, um, because that's the lens that we're viewing from just to help people get healed so we can develop that God-centered confidence. So it's not about us, but it's about what God is doing in and through us, right? And so that we can live that purpose-driven life life. Um, so what we're trying to do um, with the support of the Holy Spirit is to um, encourage you and empower you and inspire you as kingdom citizens to achieve all the goals that God has for you. Not necessarily all of your own goals, because some of that stuff is on your list, sis, or bruh. Um, you might want to take it off because that might be the reason why you procrastinated on what God is telling you to do because you don't put on it. Well, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's meet the team. This is just a portion because I know there's a few more people that are not on here, but I like to introduce um, some of us so you kind of know who um, you're dealing with. So, uh, of course, it's me. I'm Coach D. Um, I'm the founder. Um, I'm also a leadership coach and some other stuff that I'll talk about later. My husband, um, it, a lot of times I will refer you um, to him. He's like my first go-to person for deliverance. If you want prayer for deliverance, then he is my go-to person. My mentor, Minister Ella Coleman, um, she's going to be on this year, so I'm excited about that. She's been with me for years, but Minister Ella Coleman, um, she's my mentor. She's um, also kind of oversees and advises everything that I do um, especially um, with more and you lets me know if I'm on the right track. Siobhan, you see Siobhan a lot, especially if you're in Clubhouse with us. She's a relationship strategy. And Maria, she's right here. So you get to see what Maria's about. She is a purpose coach and she'll introduce herself a little later. You, uh, We did do a class to Sheena and I, to Sheena the Encourager. She is also a purpose coach as well. So um, go back and look at, look at our other trainings um, as well. Um, we may or may not refer to them, but they are um, on YouTube. Um, so you can go back in and check those out. So why are you here? Um, that is the question. Remember, I said it's focus, 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 because a lot of times when people procrastinate, it's not because you're just lazy um, or anything like that. It's just because you got a lot going on. So it could be, I mean, it's tax season right now. <laughs> so, but, you know, think about your kingdom assignment. I know I've got the taxes looming over my head as far as something that I do have to do. That's another thing as I'm going through, like, what have I procrastinated um, about with the, it was intentional procrastination with those taxes, but I'm going to get them done before the deadline. <laughs> um, you got to just schedule and get your stuff done. So what what is it? Why are you here? Um, are you on a kingdom? <laughs> look at Siobhan. Are you on um, kingdom assignment? What is your kingdom assignment? Just type in the chat if you want to just engage. I'm on kingdom assignment and that's why I'm here. Yes, girl, it is tax time. She said, I forgot about the taxes. It is tax time. 
Um, but you might be here because you got some fears, you got some anxieties about some stuff that you want to do. Um, maybe you're still uh, struggling through the aftermath of the pandemic because it, it it was a lot. It was a lot for us and a lot of adjustments that needed to be done. Uh, maybe you went through some health problems and you're like, I got to get back to it. I feel like God has definitely healed and I'm ready to refocus. Um, there could be a number of things of why you are here. Tearing down strongholds of false religion and beliefs. Yes. Um, amen and amen. Coming in hot <laughs> with that one. Uh, we'd have to unpack that one for sure. But every um, training that we do is about tearing down strongholds. Strongholds for people that are like, what, the, what is that? Um, those are just belief systems, right, um, that you hold. They could be good or they could be bad, but we're going to tear them down if they're not so great, um, especially when it comes to religion and things like that. Finishing school as an adult learner, amen to that. Big shout out to my youth. I love um, my young people. Um, get some strategies to stop regressing uh, with procrastination. Yes, because God is strategic as the relationship strategist knows um, to get my health together and create a better routine for I'm loving these um, these goals. Y'all better go ahead and have some goals for Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's keep it moving. Oh, no. Um, it looks like the wrong uh, slideshow have uh popped up so let me i'm gonna take um this down and um go ahead and make sure that i get the right um slideshow <laughs> up there because it looks like it was um an old one but i'm not sure why so just um bear with me um while i am uh, doing that but i can um actually what, what do they say they say there's no such thing as multitasking but you know, I think that that's totally um, debatable in, in regards to, um, let's see, because I know we just updated the, the slideshow. So I'm just taking a look here, but I'll introduce myself as I'm looking at um, the slideshow here. So um, I am the founder of More In You, um, coaching what you already know. I'm also an inner healing coach. So I talked earlier about being a leadership coach, um, more from this perspective of um, I am basically the founder of More In You Coaching, where we're our team of coaching. So of course I'm a leadership coach, but my um, heart is definitely in inner healing as well. And then um, I am a best-selling, I probably should uh, put on the slide. I'm going to um, share these slides with you because it looks like they're they're fine um, where I pulled them up. So let me take these, remove these here and um, go ahead and grab the slides again and see if the right ones will um, show up. Let's see. But yes, um, I am an inner healing coach as well. So um, that is truly um, my passion and is something that I am. I just learned I just learned something new about um, StreamYard for, for the coaches that use those, um, that you would just have to reload it or it would have your old um, slides there. So that's what happened there. Yeah, um, so I'm just reloading um, as as I'm talking and introducing myself a little bit. So, so you can get to see, uh, there we go. Some of the behind the scenes kind of stuff. I'm going to take so. that tip with me. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I had uh, previously loaded slides and then we uh, changed them and then here we are, but yes, I'm an inner healing coach. Um, as also best-selling Amazon author, I'm a youth speaker, um, as well as I love youth. Um, I work with the ages of 16 to 21 is my favorite age to work with. So I love when I see my um, students um, that will follow and stuff. I think one of them is here. I can't see her name, but I think she is here. Um, she's in college now. So um, I love um, working with young people. My content area is English. So I get to do things like, um, I could do like a collages as far as we call them, like vision boards. Um, that's a whole different class of what my views are on vision boards. But um, I get to do those kind of 
things all the time uh, with young people. Um, and then I'm also a biblical counselor. So I have a couple of um, master's degrees and I'm working on my dissertation in Christian um, counseling and life coaching. So of course I'm certified and all of that good stuff, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Coach Maria so she can formally introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Maria Mock, as Coach D said prior. I am the founder of the healthcare consulting firm and it's a healthcare consulting firm where we help other healthcare entities with their um, healthcare practices. We can help them in various areas. I'm a purpose coach, a author, a public speaker, and also a youth educator. And I'm happy to be here with you today. Thanks coach D. All right, um, great, let's keep it moving. But let me check on these, uh, check in the chat here. Um, busy mama life, I get a lot done but I need to make time for long-term growth goals. Absolutely, because I know uh, my kids often say, mom, you're my inspiration, how you pursue your goals and all that. So that is huge. Um, they need to see you doing what you're um, talking. <laughs> they need to see you walking like you're talking. Um, being a full-time mom, working, going back to school while prioritizing God is a challenge. God knows is what I will say <laughs> with that one, because he knows um, the time that you have and he knows if you are acknowledging him in all your ways. So let's talk about what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn how to get to the root of the problem with procrastination. Um, if you followed me just even a little bit, you know that I'm all about getting to the root. I hate going around stuff like I'm in the wilderness. I'm just going around that mountain over and over the same one. I'm, I'm getting tired of looking at the same mountain. <laughs> like So can I go around a new mountain? You know, that's kind of how I feel about a lot of different things. So we like to get to the root of it uh, and also so you can become more focused and productive. Identify patterns of self-sabotage and defeat. I totally want to do another class. Let me know if you want to do this in the chat, breaking the cycles of self-sabotage. It just um, that's something that I, 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 I'm excited about, but I need to know if you are because um, I need to wait for confirmation of the Lord. Um, but I'm thinking about doing one just focused on that. Okay, it looks like I got Coach Mio, Maria on deck uh, <laughs> with that one. But yeah, the patterns of self-sabotage, um, because you're going to learn a lot here, but we can't say it all. So I'm thinking about self-sabotage and still talking about purpose because my mentor, um, she is the founder of Purpose Magazine and she um, it was um, a world known or uh, magazine. So uh, work with Miles Monroe and all of that. That's who she was ordained. Patterns of, okay, somebody said, do it. all I need is like one. So when Maria said, yeah, I was, now I got, two. what? You got it. <laughs> it's a go. So I'm excited about that. But anyway, let's get back to this one. That's that's classic Dietra. I'm like moving on. Let's go. What are we doing? Create effective ways to make progress toward achieving your goals. Um, so as we are uh, talking, I would strongly recommend that you take notes. So um, I know that's one of the things that we both do. Uh, Maria and I is always like jotting down what like our thoughts, like I know Maria will send me a text, like, or she'll, <laughs> she'll like, we gotta talk about, you know, so she's always like documenting things that as they pop up. So please, as they pop up in your mind of stuff that you need to do or stuff that you wanna work on or stuff that God is telling you to do, start, write it down somewhere, whether it's in the notes in your phone or uh, rather sticky notes, whatever it is that you do um, that you like, then do yeah. that um, as well, we're talking. Say, see, I wrote that tip down on page three. <laughs> you said what tip down? The tip that you gave me about um, reloading. I got that on page three. Oh, you're page talking page about page StreamYard? <laughs> oh my God, yes. Um, yeah, that was a random thing. We threw that in there for free. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's a random thing. Um, but yeah, if you plan on using StreamYard, um, then it's one of those things where um, you just have to learn the new system as you use them. Some of us get really frustrated when things like that happen. No need to get frustrated because things happen, um, because there's just there's just going to be stuff that's not going to go your way. But if you get frustrated and have an adult temper tantrum, then you're setting yourself back even further, that's right? Because right. me and this ring light, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. Going? <laughs> we got to breathe through it. So, um, so yeah, uh, somebody's laughing already. That's what we like to do is we like to have fun. 
um, and we like to talk in a regular way because this is regular stuff that we go through. So we're not going to be like super formal, but we're going to talk about some formal things. So the cycle of procrastination, understanding why you struggle to get started. It helps to understand so that when you see the stuff come up, then you'll know like, oh, this is what I'm dealing with. And then God can move you through that process of change. Right. So um, I love this quote. Procrastination is the bad habit of putting off until the day after, which should have been done the day before. So one of the things I hate doing, um, and maybe to come to you, Maria, I don't know, but I do have stuff that I just absolutely hate doing. I hate packing my lunch the night before. It's just like, I hate uh -huh. it. I don't like put, um, picking out my clothes the night before. I so certain things. I don't like doing anything right before i mean i like to get it done i know how i'll feel right. if i do it right before with all the other things that could possibly take place the things that i can get out of the way get out of the way <laughs> so you you're you like to pack your lunch before i think it's so petty but i just do not like doing that i think all i need right. to get over myself <laughs> somebody nice. sent me either okay i'm not alone <laughs> i like to get it all just get it done so you're like, I'm done. Cause it, yeah, I mean, the time is the time, but we're going we're gonna to get into it. We're doing a lot of self-examination. If you're late to things, I'm going to raise my hand. I have been late um, to things. Um, I'm on time for these though. I'm like on it, <laughs> but I've definitely been late to things. <laughs> um, but that is like putting off stuff. You know, and sometimes you feel like you're you're really on top of it, but there's some areas that you need to tighten up. So let's um, let's move on. Procrastination survey. So I thought this was kind of cool. Um, at least 95 percent of us procrastinate, at least occasionally. That's what Maria and I were talking about right before uh, we went live. And 15 to 20 percent of us do it consistently and problematically. So. If you're on this training, unless you, you might just be supporting. Thank you. Um, but if you're on this training, like I'm trying to get something out of this, then um, you might be the one that's doing it consistently and problematically. So for example, when I talked about like, I don't like to pack my lunch, is that a big problem? You have to examine yourself and say if it is, or if I have a strategy, trust me, um, for how I deal with that. Um, I like to do it by week, you know, versus, you know, day by day. But um, you are here because you may be procrastinating consistently and problematically and it's causing you stress and it's causing you anxiety. So if it's to the point where it's something that you need to change, that's why we are here. But all of us, do, I, not everybody, like M Maria said, she might be... Um, <laughs> Uh, on another level in the spectrum of procrastination <laughs> than I am. I know I got some tendencies. Yeah. But most of uh, say I have some tendencies, but everything that you just said is why I don't like to procrastinate. Why yeah. I don't procrastinate. Like why I try to stay six steps ahead of if I can. But something just naturally happen. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, because it does cause more stress, you know. So uh, with the getting ready for work thing, that means that if I did not pack my lunch the day before, um, then you're like, I'm just like grabbing it, trying to, or forgetting it and so on and so forth. So it, it does create some unnecessary drama yes. um, <laughs> in your life that you don't I have like, to have. I like to try to avoid that as much as possible. <laughs> so you like to avoid stress right because <laughs> that's what that does so if it's a paper that you have due and you don't have it done i've got so much experience with school that i don't really do this to myself anymore i learned like pretty early on like the strategy for school i'll throw that out there for people that are in school so if you get a paper um and then we're going to get back to talking about stress so okay. if you get um an assignment and this particular assignment is due four weeks from now. What you want to do is start that week. So you want to start that week with any reading that's required for it, any research that's required for it. And then um, you want to actually work on your outline. Um, even if it's not formal, you want to start talking about it. You want to start 
brainstorming, however is comfortable for you. Um, and then after that, um, you want to start actually writing a little bit every single day. And then once you get towards the end where the paper, you probably already have it done, but that paper should be done the week before. So not it's not like <laughs> the day before, but that paper should be done at least a week before. So you're just revising, looking it over, giving somebody else a chance to look over it and stuff like that. So if you're not starting when you get that uh, particular <laughs> assignment, then that is you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I would you're say I it. have to agree with you there. Mine would be done a week before. Yes. Um, yes. So. so for those going to school, I hope you appreciated that because we did not have that as a part no, of that. No, that was not included. And <laughs> yeah, I, that was I, not I included. Only agree. All I can do is say yes. Tip, tip, tip. Take notes. But, you know, um, we're we're about to work on senior copstones. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that I'll have some people that are stressed out because uh, they are just starting a project that we're supposed to take four weeks or that was supposed to take six yeah. weeks. Or this is what months. their body's going to feel like. Yes, <laughs> this is what their body. So um, they, if short term effects, you might feel um, like you're worried or you're nervous or you're unable to just switch off. Uh, Maria, you're going to talk about the long term effects, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you, it might be that your heartbeat is beating faster than normal. Um, you, you may have some breathing issues. If this is tort, you might even have some tummy issues. I, I think, um, I personally don't have, my husband talks about tummy issues. I don't have the tummy issues in that way, but I've seen it. I've also seen people, um, their skin changing. Like you can see their skin changing. If you have some of these, um, no, she didn't see Siobhan. She over here in the chat. That's why I like. <laughs> she over here in the chat talk about how much y'all pay. I took. I probably could have had a business, uh, so yes. people wouldn't be so stressed out. Um, but no, <laughs> you can have. We're all adults here. They procrastinate. Huh? They have, would what they have say? learned how not to procrastinate? Just a question. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you can have original work. <laughs> so you can have original work. Because I've had students ask to uh, like, can can I just pay you to do it? Like, oh my goodness. Um, so you could also have uh, bedroom problems for the married people um, if you're stressed out. So that's not like a you know thing that most of us know that one. If you don't know any other stress uh, responses, you know that one. Um, your muscles can um, tense up as well. So there's parts of your body could feel really sore and you're like, where is that coming from? I need a massage and things like that because your body is tensing up because you're so stressed. So I'm going to pass it over to Maria to talk about the long-term effects. All right, now we're going to go. You can have, you know, those headaches that you get now and then when you're trying to figure everything out and everything just rambling in your mind and migraines and don't want to be bothered could all be avoided. But sometimes we put ourselves through it. Then you have the mental health problems. Once again, there we go with that stress. Coach D, stress you see, keeps popping up. <laughs> um, but we can talk about the mental health problems that can come from us being stressed out or overwhelmed with everything that we're trying to do last minute and trying to figure it out. Also, those heart problems. We already have a lot of heart issues sometimes just by not dealing with stress. And that's a big issue there itself. <clears throat> Trouble um, breathing, hyperventilating, panic attacks. I had a panic attack, but it wasn't because I was stressed. I was dealing with other things in life. I can only imagine having that dealing with some of the stressors that we have with putting things off. Um, I could that I can remember not being able to breathe and feeling like everything was on me, but it, had, it was just a whole different thing, but I was still stressed. And that came behind losing my son. That's a lot. And to have that on your body is real heavy. Um, skin and hair condition, hair falling out. I've had my hair fall out from stress, not from procrastinating, but just from stress itself. So I can bear witness to that. We have increased, you know, diabetes. We, <clears throat> when we hold stress in, we kill ourselves or we harm our bodies from the inside out. So that's a lot of the things that we'll be dealing with, like with the health issues. Then you have fertility problems. That has a lot to do with it too. So if you're looking to have children and, you know, be productive in life and um, go do those things, you want to be careful with how stressed that you get your body so if you can eliminate procrastination to get away from it hey i'll take it right 
Yeah, because definitely um, God is a God of order. So uh, we want to make sure that we get off the wheel of suffering. So if this is something that you're doing to yourself um, over and over again, um, we want to um, escape this cycle. So let's talk about what what does this cycle look like? And somebody said, good evening. I can't see the name, but good evening to you. Um, I hope that you are still here and you stay with us till the end. So the wheel of um, suffering, it's like you you have these goals and you don't really think that you have that big of a problem. You might think like, maybe I have a problem, but it's not that serious. Kind of like me talking about my lunch, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I can just wait. You know, it's not that deep. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, <laughs> scrambling around in the morning, that is not it. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, everybody up late. What'd you say? I said, especially if everybody in the house wakes up late. <laughs> yeah, right. Or if you have any issues that morning, you're going to forget your lunch. You know, that's just kind of it. <laughs> um, so these unrealistic goals of, for example, thinking, um, I'm just going to go with the lunch thing, thinking that I can do it all in the morning. Like, you know how long that's going to take you to pack it all in or the example we talked about with the paper you just um i got i can do this 10 page paper um in one night and if you can it's probably after years of practice nice. so for somebody like me i technically can but who wants to do that like yeah, that is say, not want to do that <laughs> you'll have a headache you'll be tired it's a lot that goes with that Right. It'll still be late. I might forget to turn it in at 12 midnight. I'm so tired. Right. Computer might crash. It's so many different things. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you're having these unrealistic goals. You don't think you have a big problem. Like it's not that deep. I'm guilty. That's why I'm putting myself out there. You can laugh at me if you feel like um, you, this is not you and this is just me. Then just laugh whatever until you I mean, come into the realization too. so i have to that's why i say something i have to agree sometimes i i know what it feels like to do all that i eliminate so we just we I, at least i try <laughs> yeah i think coach maria has learned her lesson so she's in this <laughs> season yeah. of life she's like i don't do that anymore of course because <laughs> she's been there done that right yeah. Um, so your delay causes uh, caused by fear, anxiety, stress. So this is how you get um, so anxious and you're like, really, let me um, make this full screen for everybody so you can see it a little better. Um, so you, you've got all of this fear, you've got all this anxiety, you got all this stress. And as a result, you end up missing your goals. Um, so you're not hitting your goals with, say your goal was just to be on time, right? Or be early. I know my goal is um, not to be on time, but to be like 15 minutes early, right? So you missed your goal. Now you're, you're worried, you're criticizing yourself. Now you're avoiding even doing it because it brings you <laughs> bad feelings about it. When you think about it, you're like, I don't even want to do that anymore. You don't feel successful. Um, and then you get to the point where you are approaching the deadline and now you're overwhelmed. You're full of anxiety. You're kind of in a frenzy. You got to stop and like breathe because you are you've worked yourself all up. So I know my husband is always early, um, I think, because of this. I never I've never asked him why. <laughs> um, that he likes to be so early, but I think it's because of that, because of these feelings of um, yes. and high anxiety when you're yes. not really um, on time or early to things. And you're like, did I forget something? Did I forget something? Am you I going to go back great? Go ahead. Is he the one that drives? Would you say, is he the one that- Does he drive, Coach D, when you're going places? Is he the, is he the driver? Yeah, he prefers to be. He says, I drive crazy. Then that's why, because he wants to, you know, he wants to relax. He doesn't want to fill all that behind the wheel. I yeah. can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then also uh, the disappointment, um, you go into disappointment, uh, rationalizing, I'm going to do this better the next time. Um, and then you just start all over again all over. because you, you've you missed it. <laughs> you've missed it again. Um, oh, yes. Um, I feel like I let my clients down if I'm late. Yeah. <laughs> just feeling judged. Yeah. If you make a mistake in your approach, I know that um, Siobhan is, is joking, but we totally make mistakes as coaches you know there's stuff that comes comes up in our lives and we do feel like 
really like, oh, I feel so bad um, when these different things come up. But the that's why it is important for us to be on top of it. Um, and then somebody to be early is on time and to be on time is to be late. Um, to be late is unacceptable. So it's important to understand that. But the application of that is a different thing, too, because that means that you're actually walking in wisdom. So a lot of us know the talk and we can talk the talk. Right. But can you walk the walk? You know, so when we're as we're going through um, these different uh, slides, that's what we really want to think about. If you can uh, really apply the things that, you know, because a lot of us have uh, kids that are older now and we've done all kinds of stuff. So some of this stuff we know, but there's an application um, issue. So we're digging <laughs> deeper into it. We're digging deeper into it. Um, so then that way, somebody talking about driving crazy. Oh, he talking about me. You talking about me. <laughs> he talking about me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think that I just drive like a young person. Yeah, no, she really does drive crazy. Okay. I drive like a young person. That's what it is. You know, I'm just young. Okay. 42 and brand new. Right. I'm still young out here in these streets. Uh, so what, what causes your procrastination? So it could be um, perfectionism. So you feel like you got to just do everything perfect. Um, so as a result, it's more time consuming. So if you got a perfectionism issue, you either get rid of the perfectionism issue or you are going to have to start a lot earlier uh, because you want it to be everything to be right. Um, so a lot of times people avoid starting because of perfectionism, because they don't feel like they can get it right. Right. Um, and then social media obsession, constantly checking your phone. This is some anxiety here. Um, right. Constantly checking your phone. <laughs> I know me and this Instagram, it is a hot mess. Um, so, but God, I heard the, the Holy Spirit say, let it go. Because it go. That, how much does that have to do with your kingdom assignment? Like, seriously, how much does that have to do with your kingdom assignment uh, when it comes to social media obsession and like constantly checking and um, you do want to respond and things like that, but you, you really want to be um, focused on what God is telling you to do in that moment. Um, so uh, it could be a lack of focus. That's too, Coach D. What'd you um, say, Maria? Go ahead, I Coach. Through, I struggle with that, too. And a little bit of the perfectionist, too, because I'm a perfectionist. So that's yeah. another reason why I found that procrastination doesn't work in my life. And the social media, I can get on that a little bit too much now and then. And you're right. I have to shut it down and say, let's keep moving. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> you you do have to decide how much time you're really going to a lot to a thing. Because did God say that it had to be that way? Or is that just you? You know, um, so um, even for these trainings, uh, I have to kind of like keep it in perspective because this is just me. I don't really have to necessarily do like a lot of slides and things like that. He said, offer training once a month, but it's just like how I'm built. So you do things um, in excellence and you give God all that you have. But if there is a reason that if there, there should be no in there shouldn't be a reason why I don't get this done every month because God told me to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, if there, if there is a reason it will be me. So it will be perfectionism, wanting it to look a certain way, spending too much time on social media. So I want you thinking about the thing that God has told you to do. And if he hasn't told you to do anything yet um, that you can hear, then talk to me or um, coach Maria really first talk to her first. Um, and then um, you might want to reach out to me um, if she wasn't, if she's not available or something like that. But if you have like a lack of focus where your mind is like jumping all over the place, it shows up in things. Um, I'm probably an expert in this because I've struggled with these things. It shows up in things like I have like a lot of tabs open a lot of times. So I have to like force myself to close the tabs because I'm jumping from thing to thing to thing. But because I know yeah. that this does not help with focus, then when I notice I'm doing that, I'm quicker to close the tabs uh, because I know like that's going to take away from what I'm actually doing. Right. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to, to coach Maria so she can jump in on what causes your procrastination. Um, I would say, I can be honest, it used to be fear. 
Um, for me, in some of my areas of procrastination, being afraid of failure and, you know, what it was going to look like. Um, but right now, at this point in my life, I fear not doing what I'm called to do. So Ooh, I'll that's good. eliminate that. Can't procrastinate. I know God puts us in different positions at different times to, you know, be where we need to be for that assignment. So that I eliminated that um, lack of focus really hasn't bothered me too much because I'm focused on what he gives in my calling. I've been focused for a long time in that walk. Um, I just stay focused on what he has called me to do. And then the typical distractions for me, I can say, to be honest, is looking for different things to do. Um, that is that is a distraction for me. I don't procrastinate, but I get distracted on looking at too many things to do in my walk. And I have to, you know, send prioritize. So I hope it helps um, all the listeners <clears throat> and everything. And then exhaustation. I'm exhausted today, but I'm still pushing through. So I guess I don't even have that too much. But sometimes you do have to push through and let whatever's going on in your life, let it take place, but push through to get to that next step. So that's just my look on those couple topics we had left. Is that okay? Of course. Um, I want you to type in the chat. If you're still with us, what causes your procrastination? Is it your typical distractions? You can list those distractions. Um, is it your perfectionism? Is it social media? Is it exhaustion? Um, are you just so exhausted? And I've done this uh, more recently because I like to do all the things. So I do this, um, but then at work, I'm like extra where um, the principal's like, you know, this is a lot for, um, it's not my first year teaching, but my first year in the building, like, this is a lot um, that you're doing. I'm like, this is just who I am. I'm just team too much. I need to get off that team though, because I think I'm the captain of team too much. Um, because what that, what happens is, is that you become so exhausted where you're putting off things, um, that really do need to be done, something God has told you to do. You're putting these things off, but this is actually the things that God has told you to do. So uh, this is, you want uh, God over everything. So yes. you might end up exhausted or, or is it fear? So some of the, um, somebody said all of the, the above. above. <laughs> that's what I saw. All like <laughs> Um, and that's, that's, that's all good. You know, yeah. if it's all the things, <laughs> then uh, we will work on it little by little. And I say we, that means, uh, brother, you need to, to get a coach involved, the Holy <laughs> Spirit, you got Jesus, you got, <laughs> you got the all church, you got, you got a team. <laughs> but to they work say on knowledge is battle, right? <laughs> Say that one more time and froze for me. Okay, they say acknowledgement is half the battle, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So when you are like just scrolling online, you'll stop yourself like, I have been on TikTok for 30 minutes. minutes. Like, <laughs> not okay. <laughs> Another's wrong with TikTok, but yeah, you got to move on. Um, so, so why do we stay stuck? So some of us know that we're on social media for too long. Some of us know that we're exhausted. So what, what happens? Like, why do we stay in this like negative cycle? So a lot of times it's negative thoughts and beliefs. It's how we see ourselves because maybe we don't see ourselves as God sees us. It might be um, the outcomes that we're receiving, um, our negative behaviors, because it does take time for these behaviors to change. So I'm not saying by the end of this training, you're just going to stop uh, procrastinating because it does not work that way. We're just raising awareness to you so you can start to see some of the areas that, that God is highlighting to you. What does he want you to work on? And also when it comes to your negative emotions, like when if you find that you have negative emotions, that you have negative thoughts and beliefs, then you start being really down on yourself because you, you don't see yourself the way God sees you. And then as a result, you continue to procrastinate and you continue yeah. to not reach your goals. And then you see how you just keep going through the cycle oh, over funny. and over again. Right. So I'm going to go back to this one. I do encourage you, if you are a journal person, um, pick one, just one. Cause somebody said I'm all the things. One at a time. So pick one. Is it, you're just, you doing too many of your TV shows? Because I got some TV shows I can get with you <laughs> in that TV show conversation. Is it the internet? 
um, and just random stuff? Is it perfectionism that you want to work on? If you did not, if you did not type this in the chat, I do want you to type it in the chat. What are you going to work on? What causes your procrastination? Is it social media? Are you online too much? Because we can set a goal for that. Is it exhaustion? Are you just doing too much? Um, that's my area of focus, exhaustion, um, just doing too much. So I have, I was going to finish the, the PhD um, in, by April 19th because it's possible. But then I'm like, Dietra, just because it's possible doesn't mean that you just have to do it that way. Does it make sense? Is it wise? It is not wise. So <laughs> as a result of oh, that whole inner conversation, <laughs> me and Jesus, um, then I am going to just um, work on it slowly because there's no rush. Like, who really cares but me? Um, so is it exhaustion? Is it lack say, of Go ahead, yeah. Coach. Mine is perfection. I won't go back to get my master's because it, I want it to be perfect. I want the timing to be perfect. I mm -hmm. want. Um, so it's like I had to have that come to, is it really worth it? Can I just do what I'm doing and gradually get there and get there maybe instead of a year and a half, maybe three so my retirement has been pushed out to three years now. <laughs> yeah. And then another, I'm glad that you brought that up because another people, another thing that people do is obsess about getting an A with every class. And I did that. I've been through so many classes now. I'm like over it. But at <laughs> first I was like, it has to be an A in every class. So that's perfectionism. That, I say, if you get an A, great. Huh? See, get degrees too, D. You said, what about see? degrees? Get degrees too. C's get degrees too. That's worth saying again. But <laughs> the, the people that um, that do this, they will not receive that. They will not accept it. Like that, they it's gonna have to be Jesus Himself, like He did to me, and He That's crawled down from me, heaven bro. and told me. <laughs> That's how I got it. Like okay, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, not gonna go down for it heaven. <laughs> But um. But yeah, I do want you to do this in your notes. Is it lack of focus? What do you want to focus on? Is it fear? Whatever it is. So um, Coach Maria said hers is perfectionism. Mine is exhaustion. Um, you cannot pick all the things. So if you don't type it now, <laughs> you must be away from your phone because I know we have some uh, people on here. But if you're listening to the replay, pick your area of focus. I do not want to just talk to be talking, right? Because this is <laughs> supposed to train you and to help support you. It's not po podcast. Uh, this is actually something that's supposed to train you and support you as you grow. All right. Um, so let's talk about the roots of all of these. Let's um, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see a little bit. Um, we always talk about getting to the root of it and then actually um, the fruit and as it grows. So you should probably see this in every training that we do because it's all about getting to the root. So a procrastination, um, maybe um, the root of that was that you were rejected at one point, right? Maybe the root of it is that you are confused. Um, that could be the root of it. Um, maybe the root of it was trauma because trauma shows up in a lot of different ways. Maybe the root is fear. Like that's what we had just talked about. Um, maybe the fear of even um failure because that's somebody typed in the chat that their area um is exhaustion that um they want to focus on and i think i've worked myself to um so hard and i know my middle son kind of does this because he is man overachiever <laughs> um uh, <laughs> definitely overachiever i think he gets it from his mama um so that's not necessarily a good thing um being an overachiever because we're supposed to be working on our kingdom assignment and not trying to be more than you know god is telling us to be um but be exactly who he told you to be and stand on it 10 toes down for sure um but not out of fear but just because that's who you are right that's who you are in christ maybe the root of it is humiliation you don't want to be humiliated um maybe uh, i think i already talked about rejection um at the root of it where you try so hard because you want to be accepted you want to be loved so what happens is we start self-medicating instead of going to god and saying god um you know what i am confused.com that's an old phrase this this is your auntie talking no, i'm just like <laughs> i'm not even old enough to be everybody's auntie but um but yeah 
So you may be feeling like, you know what? I'm going to fix this myself. I'm going to um, I'm going to work out like crazy. I'm going to um, get connected to the church and get and you end up getting caught up in religion and you're like, but I was trying to do a good thing because you're trying to fix yourself. So I'm going to just zone out sometimes and I'm just going to watch TV and quote unquote relax. Right. That's one of the ones that I'm um, working on or I'm submitting to God because I'm really not working on it that hard. But um, as far as the the ways um, to relax or whatever, um, because this is what God is what his job is, is to comfort us, not for us to find the comfort in doing all of these things. So it could be performance where Coach Maria and I talked about, um, oh, well, I'm going to, and the last uh, slide about God may be telling you to go to school to get a certification so you can do a certain thing for the kingdom. But you're like, well, yeah, I don't really, I don't know if I want to do it. Can I do it this way? Can I do it that way? Or maybe you are going to school and you got to get that A. That's what we were just talking about. Yeah. You got to get that A. But God is just saying, get the certification. Yeah. I don't, you know, pass the test, you know, pass, fail kind of thing. He's, he's just not a God that's like that. Um, it may be that you or like focus. This is one of the things that I kind of struggled with before I got um, married again was just uh, falling in love and meeting the right person and things like that. And those things were like a complete distraction and waste of time. Bless my heart. But God is faithful because <laughs> he still um, <laughs> sent the right person because that was a utter waste of time because there was so many things that I could have been doing. So you got to think about are these your method? of healing is it really helping you busyness so maybe it's not relationships and stuff that you're you're distracted by maybe you're not distracted by relationships but you just got to stay busy um, and that is such a pet peeve for me when people are like oh i'm just so busy like yes just stop that is not that's not something that is of god that is of this world like that he hurts. He wants us to have rest. Yes. He wants us to have rest. And then um, at the top of all this, you see how this grows into all of these things, right, in our lives. So it grows into more fear and anxiety to the point of panic attack. It grows into a negative um, self-image. It grows into perfectionism because you are so scared that you're going to get rejected. It grows into emotional immaturity <laughs> because um God wants us to mature and to grow in him. But when your root, when the root is hurt, it grows up into emotional immaturity because you end up being an adult, having adult temper tantrums. It grows into broken relationships as an adult. Um, because if you want to be with somebody that's like, um, really on top of their game and you're not, it's going to create problems within your relationship. So um, it can grow into so many different things. And what we are wanting to do is cut it from the root. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to pass it over to coach Maria to talk about the roots that are planted by God and how that grows. Um, the roots that are planted by God, um, God wants us to have a boldness about ourselves a zeal love, a worthiness. Um, we got to have faith. We got to have faith in him and everything that he's setting out for us. And you got to have patience. You can't have um, a lot of these things, you know, when um, other things like procrastination and all that setting there or all of the other um, roots of the trauma and everything that Coach G just talked about. He wants us to have a heart of kindness and goodness and faithful control, faithfulness, love, and joy. And it is actually our true self. When we have that, we have peace. We can walk in our ministry. Our health is good. We have very healthy relationships. We have hope, joy, love, confidence, and obedience, confidence, prosperity, healthy marriages. All of that comes from having all of those things. And those things come from eliminating things in our life like procrastination. And um, dealing with the traumas and everything that we talked about above that you know, has the root that can bear the fruit of the other things that we don't want to deal with. I just think that looking at all of this, looking at the different forms of it and the roots and the fruit that it bears is very important and key. Thanks, Coach D. 
Absolutely. Um, and to simply put, how do you do this? You do this by studying the word, meditating on the word, worshiping, praying, um, fellowshipping with other believers. Um, that's how you do this so that you can really um, go to that next level. And this is a form of doing it. So we're all doing it now by connecting with each other. Um, the internal battle is going to be our second part. So we've reached our sec the second part, the internal battle within. So we end up, a lot of times, it's not completely our fault. It's We've got spiritual attacks, we've got stress and trauma, and some of us have adult ADHD. So if you did not take the test, it is um, posted in the group. I found out that I had a moderate form of it. Um, so I wasn't diagnosed as a child, but these are these are issues um, that I have had like my entire life, but I did not have a label on it because I was really high performer in school. So that that was very interesting to me with the ADHD. So if you're curious after we do this um, class, then go take that that test. Um, that's why I posted in a group for you to take it um, before this class, uh, because it is very um, helpful to know what you're actually dealing with so that you can pray um, to God for him to um, rescue you and heal all you yes. um, from all of the things um, that you may be experiencing, especially if it's ADHD um, and things like that. It was also very comforting to know that it's just not just me not doing what I'm supposed to do. Like there is an, a real issue here. Uh, so some of it, I know we really don't have time to get into all the spiritual um, ramifications and all the spiritual roots, but I wanted to hit at least one of them. One of them is sometimes you could be experiencing the spirit of heaviness. Um, so I think coach Maria, you referred to it earlier when you talked about your son, um, where, um, I'm not saying that you experience excessive mourning, but when you are going through a grieving process, sometimes it could end up being excessive. So you have to, to, um, pay attention and be aware of that. I'm not saying that um, there's a time limit on grieving. Um, all I'm saying is just um, be aware of that and let the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone tell you if it's excessive. I'll put it that way because nobody can tell you um, that something that you're dealing with that, oh, you should be done with that. That happened a year ago or that happened three weeks, three, yeah. well, I said three weeks, but that happened three years ago. Um, you should be over that by now. Nobody can tell you that. But the sorrow and the grief um, from different things that you've experienced, that could be the root of the procrastination. Um, it could be that you just feel sorry for yourself because you have had a lot of issues. You've had a lot of, I just had one of my, she's like my closest, one of my closest friends that her car was stolen mm. and it was, um, you know, completely stripped out of nowhere. So go to bed, you're cool and everything is great. You wake up to the police knocking at your door and wow. all of, um, you know, your car's just gone and you didn't even know you know so things like this happen and sometimes it happens like back to back so maybe um your grandma died somebody stole your car um maybe your car got repo like it might be all kinds of different things um, that have happened and you're just like i tried to work three jobs and i still didn't have enough to pay that car payment whatever um but sometimes we can start feeling sorry for ourselves and or uh, maybe it's like broken relationship after broken relationship or you can't sleep and you don't know like where is this coming from i don't even know because a lot of the stuff i don't even remember when i was a kid like i know something happened but i don't remember what it was it could be literally it's depression um it could be just the inner hurts that's within you where you might one of the signs that you uh, may be depressed is like you just sit there and you just like zone out like and they're like are you gonna do the thing yeah lack of motivation it's a lot yes. of things. like you said it's a lot of things um and it's yeah it's solely on the person because when i dealt with a lot i've been through a lot of things in my life as you know coach d mm -hmm. um and i've, I've always i on how i deal with it because i know if i sit in it too long then i'm still not doing his work some mm -hmm. things depending on how minute it is i said marie you got three minutes to be upset about that you got three hours, you got three days, you got three weeks. 
but I still have to put a time limit because I don't want all of those other things to set in like you were talking about. So we do have to be definitely be mindful of that. And we can't yeah. judge a person by how long it takes, but we can hopefully within you know, saying using God and everything he's put in us help people get through yeah. how long it takes. Yeah, for sure. Um, because I know like when I was going through a lot, um, when I think it was like, like I was in my early 20s um, and I would just come to church and I was just sad because it was like breakups and then I was a teen parent. Um, so I had, you know, come into adulthood, but then I was still in college. It was just a lot. A lot. Um, it is. Yeah, it was a lot. And mm -hmm. they would tell me like to praise my way through, but I didn't understand what they were talking about <laughs> because I'm like, how am I supposed to do that? I am hurting right now. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Praise my way through. I can't even smile. And one of the things yeah. Yeah. I was not, I'm not really a fake person where I can just, hey, how's it going? <laughs> like, if I say, hey, that means I'm really happy. Like that, I, I just don't yeah. do that well. So mm -hmm. what they did, what they missed is that, yes, I'm supposed to put on a garment of praise because you cannot, you know, praise God and be depressed at the same time. But mm -hmm. I needed a comfort, you know, yes. I needed the comfort to my heart. Because um, going back to what happened early on, it was like, I'm thinking that this young man is going to stick with me um, because he said he would. He ended up marrying me, but it was a hot mess. But I'm thinking he's going to st yeah. stick with me and he's like doing whatever, you know? So it was like, I was just heartbroken. And somebody here One said thing that, yeah. they were... One thing. They, they came home the night they were baptized and their home had been broken into and they were robbed. So you can't tell this person, you got to praise your way through. I'm yes. not going to say that. <laughs> like you're sad, you know, you are and sad. And I mean, tools that we have to, you know, um, we have to establish for ourselves and what works best for us. For me, it's standing the word. For me, it's standing, you know, saying gospel music. I have certain um, individuals I talk to. I have various coaches. It's all about you know, in the tools and the things that you utilize to help bring you through it. And it all has to be positive. So different tools we can utilize and methods. Yeah. Um, so you really have to let the Holy Spirit lead you with that um, as far as giving you that oil of joy. So even if your, your home was broken into, even if your car was um, stripped, set on fire, um, out of nowhere, um, even if your husband to be or the woman that was the woman of your dreams left you, whatever, left you with nothing. They, the women, we like to take your money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but left you with nothing. Um, and I can and you're like, even if you lose a child. So it's. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of hard to get back in the game after all that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we are not telling you if you have lost somebody or these kind of things have happened, you need to get it together. This is not that um, not at, at all. all. So when people are saying lack of motivation, sometimes um, it's not really a lack of motivation. You just are really struggling with the spirit of heaviness because you are hurting inside and that is okay. Take the time to let God to heal you. Don't set these astronomical goals like Coach Maria and I like to do. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Um, just, you know, let God heal, right? Um, and then it could be that you're under attack, right? So That's some awesome. of us, um, we maybe the things that I talked about have not happened, but you are just like, yeah, I don't have any of that going on. But I, I'm not really passionate about anything. I'm curious, you know, that's why I'm on here, but I don't have any of that going on. So that's actually an attack. This would be a series if um, y'all know how I like to do. I like to like pack in a lot of stuff <laughs> to get you thinking. So, um, but you might lack spiritual passion. Again, if you have any questions about any of this stuff or you want us to, to do a follow-up, um, on one of the things that we talked about, then definitely um, either type it in the comments. If you're like lack of spiritual passion, how is that a spiritual attack? Then let us know if that's a question for you, because we can do like a clubhouse room or something like that um, where we can answer questions like that. 
um, extreme frustration. So you find yourself when you get ready to start on your kingdom assignment or you don't even know what it is and that frustrates you. Yes. You don't know what you're you're embarrassed to even say that you don't know what your kingdom assignment is because you feel like you should know by now or you feel like everybody knows their purpose and you don't know what it is. You're confused um, about that. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to, to Coach Maria to see since she is the purpose coach here. Um, <laughs> The spiritual. I just think that I'm confused about purpose. That is a, one thing that I see a lot of people, you know, deal with. Um, it's embedded in us. And we have to first also think about, we have to stop looking for it. It's already there. We have to cultivate it. We have to find it and we have to just work with it. Um, so if you don't know your purpose, it's okay. But it takes you know, the proper steps to identify it. It could have been there six years ago and you just didn't know it. So confusion about purpose is real. And be, you know, you can be under it to that, but it's not the last, it's not the end of all ends. Something we can figure out. And you can definitely give me a call on that. That is what I love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we because can look at if all. you're confused, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, if you're confused about your, your purpose, a lot of times you do lack peace. So, you know, when it gets late and you have time to think, you just feel like unsettled. And a lot of times that is an indication that you may be under attack because the enemy, he likes to get us to the point where we just don't feel right. We feel agitated for no good reason. Like nothing is wrong in our lives. Like we have, um, we got a roof over our heads. We've got food. We've got a job. We've got, some of us are either married or in a relationship or whatever. You just feel like something's still wrong. You know, that's an attack from the enemy. And maybe you are tired. Like you're just, I'm just tired. You know, you find yourself saying that to person after person, how you doing? I'm just tired. Like you always tired, not a normal tired, not because you're sick, but you just tired and you just want to <laughs> quit, like throw a towel. I quit. <laughs> you know, I get threatened by students to drop out. Like really? it's the dumbest thing. <laughs> It's the dumbest thing, like the dumbest threat that I've ever received. Like, I'm just going to drop out. And I can tell they're like wanting me to say, I'm like the, the devil, because that who part. does that? Like you, <laughs> well, but they, you, I think they have this strong urge to just quit. How do you deal with them going back to old habits and old things that you see that they're, they're, they were doing because of the comfort that it brings? When we're under attack, you want to go back to a comfort zone. So mm. call if they're calling towards old habits and old things that are there. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like the, it's just calling you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah go ahead. The comfort zone. If you're looking for that comfort while you're under attack. Don't fall for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so this is another good one that uh, is definitely Coach Maria's lane as far as habitually questioning oh, your purpose. Your purpose. Um, yeah, that'll, when you're under attack, you'll always be like, am I doing the right thing? Am I going the right way? Is this what God has for me? So those are some things that can have you. And when you feel under attack, it's there too. So that's definitely something to pay attention to. Yeah. Even though somebody might have told you five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, this is your purpose. God has told you what your purpose is. And you're like, I don't know. Like, I just really... I really second guessing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just not. <laughs> and then you're like going like, let me go and see if I can get another prophetic word because yes. I just, I don't, yeah. don't, I don't know. Even though they told you about five, six, you have dreams about it. You yeah. have dreams about your purpose and you still, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Questioning it and second guessing it. Yes. Just walk in it. <laughs> yes. 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 And then you can also look at the long list, the long, impossible long to-do list. Sometimes that sets us up. We're under attack then too, when we just have this drawn out list, knowing that we can't accomplish those things. Mm. And we're not shorting it down to take the steps to do one thing at a time. Sometimes we can do two things at a time, but we can't do 22 things at a time. So we have to look at that too. And it's okay, just back down a little bit so you don't have to feel so much pressure and under attack. Yeah.
So one of the things, um, those, I mean, this, this idea of being under attack, um, we didn't really, uh, I would say lead up to this as far as spiritual attacks, but with the enemy there, there is our side, which is the kingdom side. And then there is an enemy, which is an opposition. He's an oppositional force that wants to come up against us. So he gets us caught up into making these long to-do lists. And I've been guilty of that one. If you've been guilty of that one, um, say me too in the chat, um, where I have these <laughs> long <laughs> to-do lists. Um, and then I, I, I start saying, I have to do this. I have to do that then I feel like I don't have a choice. I just got to get it done. That's anxiety. That is not from God. And then as a result, you end up procrastinating on the very thing that God is telling you to do. God told me to build more in you a long time ago, but I was doing these long to-do lists, right? So <laughs> I got one person to say me. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> but I'm not alone. Um, no, but not. I was doing these long to-do lists. Uh, they were just so long and I felt like, um, oh, I can't do all of this. I felt powerless. I felt like I, uh, well, well, what am I going to, I'm supposed to be on kingdom assignment, but I have no choice um, to, to how, what, what do I do? You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, oh my God. Like I, I felt agitated. I felt pressured. I felt like, how am I going to get all of this done? And I feel like I'm procrastinating, but I'm really trying. Yeah. I'm really yeah. making it. Like really not. You're just overexerting yourself. You're under attack. And yeah. sometimes we can place ourselves under attack. Right. <laughs> so that that being said, if you we attract a lot of coaches because um, we provide like materials and leadership development and stuff like that. If you're a coach, a lot of coaches do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Their, their to-do lists are long. Um, they got a lot of have to do's this and all that. And then they're just exhausted. So yes. we're, we're telling you to let it go. Um, cause some of this Sometimes. may be due to trauma. Um, <laughs> it might be, it might be due to trauma. So or it could be ADHD. It and could they be. overlap, right? <laughs> yes, it could be. It could be trauma. It could be ADHD. It could be a mixture of both. Um, so we'll we'll have a quick conversation about it. If you guys, again, these these slides are always packed full of information. So if you want to talk about one of these later, you're just curious, or you listen to the replay over, and you're like, uh, yeah, I want to know more about this particular thing. Let's do it um, because I feel like in this particular case, um, there's just a lot to unpack. So if you've experienced trauma, then you might get so irritable while you're trying to work on your kingdom assignment. You can't even finish it because you just so irrit irritated. Like I'm you like you're like, I'm just irritated. Like it just and I've had an issue with one of the coaches where she just got so irritated and frustrated. And she was just like, I don't want to work together anymore. Like, oh, wow. yeah. yeah, that that happens where sometimes you just get irritated. And some people, somebody said sometimes it's just laziness. I after doing this training, I don't believe that most of the time it's not laziness. I think some of the times that people people do things for a good reason. I'm not saying that nobody's lazy because that's probably not true. But yes. people do things for a good reason. So you really have to examine yourself. Is it laziness or is it something that's unhealed? Um, is it ADHD, trauma? I was say, or is it difficulty sustaining attention, sustaining your attention or keeping your attention? Yes. Because I don't I learn a certain type of way. So in order for me to in order for it to keep my attention, it has this way. Right. So that's what I mean. Like you, then there's that overlap. Difficulty concentrating and learning in school. It's not only in school, it's in everything that we do. So there's that overlap between trauma, ADHD coming together too. Yeah. Yeah. So it might not be that you're lazy. It might be that you're just not interested in doing that yes. thing. Like mm -hmm. I personally have, I like to read and write like I'm weird. Okay. So that I the learned, reason why I, I learned I'm, better with audio. Would you say I, said, I learn better with audio so I can listen to it or visualizing it? If it's not that way, then it doesn't mean I'm lazy or I'm procrastinating. I just don't want to do it, so I have to find another way. Right. 
so you got to figure that stuff out about yourself and it could be like spiritual attack so i'm not saying that it's not just you because maybe i don't know um that's between <laughs> you and jesus but yes. i'm saying that there are some other things because sometimes the holy spirit will tell you um yeah this is laziness this yes. is not a spiritual attack this is you that yes. this is a part of yourself that you need to submit to me you know what i mean mm -hmm. so maybe that's it but um we're 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 exploring possibilities like somebody yes. said it's a, it's a possibility um it could be when it comes to trauma you do have sometimes this helplessness mentality um sometimes you are feeling like something bad is going to happen so you it's hard for you to focus on your purpose and your kingdom assignment because you're in fear for your life at times i know um one of my relatives said they they just knew they were going to die like they just knew it you know stuff like that um and there's all kinds of different things that can happen for different people so you could end up with that's why i really want to do that self-sabotage thing because the self um destructive behaviors out yes. of trauma like you know you need to be doing a b and c but you're just not doing it and it's not because you're all it's not only because you're lazy um mm -hmm. it's just because uh, like somebody said in the chat we have to submit it all to jesus so we haven't even acknowledged any some of the stuff that we need to submit and then sometimes we're like well i don't know what all this stuff is lord well tell him that tell him yeah. you don't know what it what it all is but to take it but yeah. we gotta at least say something something uh, something to again, God. acknowledgement is half the key <laughs> yes it's huge and you'll hear that a lot with us like acknowledgement is that first step so yeah. with with um adhd um you may find yourself um these are a couple of the signs where you're talking excessively um even if it doesn't show up as talking excessively because yeah. all of us me or my husband we we probably both have but we don't neither one of us he thinks I I'm talk say, that's why i love the talk i love speaking engagements right yeah <laughs> yeah but some of us uh, talk excessively some of us don't some of us um interrupt some of us have learned the skills not to so that's what you also have to consider for a person like me i am an educator so i'm like constantly learning so a lot of this stuff is skills um that you can definitely learn so the overlap in between being like disorganized um really not seeming like you're listening to things easily distracted that is a i know i have the symptoms of both like trauma and adhd for me, me too. so they overlap um but i deal with a lot of adhd and because i know that it helps me be able to you know say find the use the proper tools yeah and that's what we need like yeah. that's why we're we're offering this um to just give you some information and prayerfully as we're going through that the holy spirit is highlighting some things for you so that you can um do further research or he'll lead you to a, another resource so maybe it's not that you're doing the the research but he'll lead you to another thing because the fear and the self-sabotaging thoughts where um someone is uh commenting in the the chat what i would suggest for you um is to start logging what those thoughts are so you can fight back with empowering thoughts yes. right because sometimes you don't you're you're being a uh, spiritually attacked some sometimes those thoughts are not even your thoughts those thoughts are um actually from the enemy so if yeah. you actually write those down when you have a prayer session or something like that we can definitely pinpoint it and start fighting back um with throwing back fiery darts um of the word back at the enemy as he is infiltrating your mind with these <laughs> self-sabotaging um thoughts yes. so and then prayer prayer is definitely a key um affirmation um is definitely a tool um yes. that's why there's so many decrees and declarations and bible oh, verses you we do that soul detox fast for this reason to like help you through it because sometimes 
we're dealing with these things like we want to stop the cycle of procrastination. It's not really enough to to go and hire a therapist or hire a coach. It's just something that we want to work on. Um, that's why we need like a supportive um, group of believers, especially if you maybe you don't feel connected to your church or whatever, um, so that you can actually work on some of this stuff. So let's talk about what ADHD is and what ADHD is not. I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger um, so that hopefully you can see all of this. Yes, and accountability. Depending on the level of accountability, you might want um, to have a coach because um, when it's like a group, sometimes if it's a group that is not um, where they're, the coach is not necessarily your um, coach that you have hired, sometimes it's not enough accountability depending on the level of issues that you're dealing with but sometimes it's just right so i'm glad that you're here and you found this group so adhd is um attention deficit hyper hyperactivity disorder i think most of us know that it's, it's yeah. a very common disorder that impacts your focus and your impulse control and emotional responses so when it comes to um, the cycle of procrastination why are we talking about adhd and the cycle of procrastination because if you are impulsive then you are not actually working on your kingdom assignment and you're just doing these random things and god needs you to focus on him and he needs you to focus on your kingdom assignment but if you're having these issues then it may be because you have um, a condition that god needs to heal um so he's revealing it so that he can heal a lot of times this is diagnosed in childhood but sometimes it's not diagnosed in childhood and you've had the symptoms but depending on how it showed up you may not have been diagnosed so it's not just about hyperactivity it's not a problem with laziness or somebody <laughs> that mentioned it um i'm glad you mentioned it because you might be like wow maybe i'm not lazy or <laughs> maybe i have this issue instead yes. um because the devil likes you to believe lies um so it, it it's not a problem with laziness it's just the way that your brain and your wiring works and wow. then it's not something that you necessarily would um, outgrow. Like you're like, oh, they they seem like they're getting better as they get. I know I thought it because my brother had on the next slide. Uh, we're gonna talk about this. Uh, the the differences between um, ADD, a type one and type two. Um, but I didn't think that I had it, but I actually did because it showed up differently for me. And neither one of us grew like, out of it. My brother or. That's what I'm about to say. That's what most people say, like, oh, they'll grow out of it. No, you don't. You just learn how to mask it. And we learn how to use different things. Or we can either learn how to have tools to help us deal with it, but we never grow out of it at all. So what is it? What happens with adults, Coach Maria? What happens with adults with ADHD? Um, we may have trouble with, you know what I'm saying, staying organized. Or sometimes it could be a, a compulsive organization. We do have sometimes have trouble managing time, staying focused on what's important. Sometimes I have to sit and be like, what's important? Oh, I don't want to do that. But that's not a form of procrastination. It's just the fact that I don't want to do it because it's not important at the time. Um, getting started on a task. I know I can get a task done. Sometimes I can be like, I can put that task off because I know I can get it done in 20 minutes. But it doesn't mean that it should be done at this given time. Think before saying and doing things. I've learned how to really think and analyze things um, before I say, because some people can't deal with what actually blurts out of our mouths sometimes. So we have to cognitively stop and think about if we're saying it the correct way. Um, keeping things in mind. Sometimes I write things down. And I do a list a day. I have a calendar. I have a to-do list. I deal with it every day. Keeping things in mind and working them, sitting on memory. Shifting focus from one thing to another. We have difficulty with that. Following directions and managing emotions. So when you have ADHD and you're dealing with all of these other things, can you imagine when you're under attack and all of these other things are taking place, there's more stress. It's not as easy, but it might not be a form of procrastination, but it feeds procrastination. Right. 
And I love this tip that's in the chat. Um, focus on scheduling appointments and weekly goals to avoid procrastination. So that's one of the tips. Um, we'll give some <laughs> tips at the end. I'm a better writer than speaker when it comes to communicating. Um, yes, because uh, speaking and writing, those are both skills. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes we just are more interested in one um, than the, the other. So uh, definitely uh, maximize your strengths, minimize your weaknesses. So this is what I was talking about in the previous slide. Type 1 ADHD, type 2 ADHD. Hyper inattention without hyperactivity. That was me. The um, type two is hyperactivity without inattention. So uh, you don't really have the, I have severe attention problems. Like it's bad where my um, students are like, Miss Hester, pay attention. Like, look at me, I'm right here. <laughs> like it's it can be, cause I have so much uh, going on. So, so much going on. It's just the way that our school is structured. And I'm going to get back to this. So it might be a student wants me to, they want to take a test. This student just wants to talk about their life. This student wants to talk about their schedule. Like they're literally all sitting there at the same time. Um, but the way that I function when it comes to this and uh, attention problems, uh, then I also have somebody, a student texting me or calling me or whatever. So sometimes all of this stuff is happening at the same time. So when people are like, um, pay attention, um, a person with, and they're like, you just look kind of spaced out. This is the, this is where it starts to show up, the type one ADHD. Um, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it a little better. Um, hopefully you can see it. But trouble paying attention, trouble following directions. Um, I know I used to get in trouble for that. Like you go, they tell you to go into the next room and get me A, B, and C out the cabinet. I don't see it. Like it, I really did not see it. Shy or withdrawn behavior. I am obviously not shy, but I can't, I come off that way in person at times. Um, easily distracted. I know my husband, I was like, can you turn the TV down? And he was like, the T, I did. And I was like, it still sounds kind of loud. He was like, it's on six. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So that I get distracted. My daughter can't do the dishes. When I'm doing this, like nobody can do anything. Cause yeah. otherwise I'm going to be like listening to his fishing YouTube videos and listening to her messing around in the kitchen and watching the chat like it's just oh my gosh so yeah. <laughs> um that's how that's how it shows up for me so i can seem like i'm careless yeah. i really do care it just seems like i'm careless sometimes seem a little disorganized this is how it shows up at work sometime they're like does she like they have to see me actually do something so when i did the talent show um and when i did the poetry slam they were like oh okay she cool you know <laughs> Um, because they're kind of like, I don't know. She's a little all over the place. Slow to process information. I know somebody, um, one of my, I was a career center director at National College. And one of my coworkers, she was like, Deetra, it just seems like you can't see my fingers because, okay, here we go. She was like, it's like your brain is like, uh, and it stops. Like, it just not, <laughs> you're like not getting it. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that I didn't have like self-esteem problems when it comes to my intelligence because that would have hurt my feelings. But I know she really didn't mean it like in a derogatory way. She was just like, sometimes I'm wondering when I'm talking to you, like, are you catching it? Like, what's going on? But it's really because of the way that my brain is wired and God has to rewire the brain when you have experienced a lot of trauma or you've experienced a lot of stress. Um, he has to rewire your brain and he can do it because he is faithful. So um, my brother had type two. Coach Maria can talk about type two. Woo. Let's go into type two. <laughs> um, once again, the trouble with paying attention. I can struggle with paying attention. Um, but I can pay attention to a lot of things at once. So it's kind of like that battle for me. Mm -hmm. uh, restlessness, I can get restless. My husband will be like, can you sit down and watch this movie? And I'll have to have something. I'm fidgeting something, paying with a pen. I'm taking notes. Restlessness. Impulsive speech and actions. If anybody knows me, they know I'm constantly moving. Even when I give um, speeches or I'm talking in front of a crowd, I pace. But that's my comfort zone. 
excessive talking. Well, like I said, I like to talk a lot. That's why I like to speak, speaking engagements. <clears throat> loud interaction with others. Most of the time I am loud and the interaction with others is, you know, it's like, hey, hi, I'm Maria. Very loud. Difficulty waiting my turn. That part right there was a struggle for me because as soon as it comes in my head, I was ready to jump with it. Um, frequent interruptions. I don't like a lot of interruptions. They, they bother me. Um, but I had to learn tools with that so that individuals know I'm doing this from this time to this time. Overactive, I like to do a lot of things, so I will stay overactive. Um, but at the same time, I'm focused on one thing. I can focus on one thing, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to be overactive. And when you say may have a quick temper, woo, I'll tell you. I had so much going on, especially dealing with trauma and everything with this. My temper would go from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. Had to learn a lot of tools and um, self, you know, self correction with that. So that is definitely something I can relate to. Yeah, and it looks like um, we are not alone. We got people raising their hand <laughs> in the chat. I have to have complete silence to um, concentrate. And I'm gonna share that tip from um, the relationship strategist. Um, a little later as far as how to to deal with um, that when we get to the tips yes. um, we're going to talk about it because now we're we're moving into um, winning the battle yeah she had to set a relation okay um, winning the battle how to resist the urge to procrastinate so we already know um, what we're dealing with now um, we know that it could be ADHD, it could be stress, it could be trauma, like we, we, it could be a spiritual attack. We know there's a lot going on, but now it's time to get into doing the, the work. So you know I'm all about breaking free and I'm all about like pulling it up from the root so that you understand it, you understand that that there may you may be bound in some areas. You may be held back. A lot of times coaches, we like to say, um, what is holding you back? So it could be procrastination is holding you back from being everything that God has told you to be. Um, also, just the realization that you need God, um, his help. You need his help. You need to repent, which means to change, to, to stop doing the things that you are doing. That's why I told you to pick one thing, though. I don't want you to overwhelm yourself, but um, you need to repent, which means to, to pray to God and ask him um, for forgiveness um, for being stuck in this area. Because some of us knew what it was and we just like let ourselves stay in that place. So we got to repent from that. <laughs> and renew our minds. Um, and this is a part of renewing our minds with finding um, different strategies and tools and resisting the urge. So it will come back again. So this is not the end, this is just the beginning. It will come back again. Well, you'll, you'll want to start um, procrastinating again and falling back into those old habits, but you have got to resist the urge. And in order to do that, you have to strengthen your spirit, man. That's why we do the fast. There's another fast coming up. If you missed the last 40 days, you got another chance <laughs> for it to fast with us for 40 days. So that that way we can be strong enough to resist the urge because sometimes in this time in your life, if you've been through a lot where we talked about the spirit of heaviness earlier on, you may not feel strengthened enough in your spiritual man for you to be able to resist the urge to procrastinate. So you really do have to strengthen yourself and so that you can walk in restoration where you're thriving in your purpose and where you are doing the things that God has called you to do. This is what the road to freedom looks like. This is why we are doing this. How do you recover? How do you recover, Coach Maria? What do you think? Woo, recovery is um purpose has a lot to do with your i mean well your recovery purpose finding your purpose has a lot to do with your recovery um and just stand you know since stand the task it'll help you be transformed you can renew your mind it's so much that goes with it but definitely renewing your mind and thinking about things from a different perspective and then using those tools and allowing those things to take and manifest within your life Amen. Um, so we we want to line up to the word of God. We want to renew our mind. Uh, but here's another question for you, Coach Maria. How does purpose help you to overcome? Well, knowing your purpose also helps you identify and know why you exist. 
what's your what's your why should how can you get to your vision if you don't know your purpose how can you develop a mission if you don't know your purpose um, you will get frustrated and you will let procrastination sit there with you because now you don't even know where you're going. So all of those other things can sit and manifest while you're dealing with procrastination or why am I procrastinating? Because you don't know where you're going. You have to know why you exist to know where you're going. Your vision, what you want to do in the future, what are you looking to accomplish? What are you looking to go? Your mission, what do you do every day to achieve it? You'll get frustrated. You will procrastinate if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know what you have to do to achieve it, if you don't have a mission, you don't have values, and if you're not positioning yourself properly. All of these things will help you find your, you know, help you in your purpose walk and eliminate a lot of the procrastination and knowing the traumas, the ADHD, all the things that could have a possibility and playing a role in the procrastination, or is it even procrastination at all? But knowing what you're here for will help you be able to identify that it's very important and it's key yeah um it actually i was taking a look over here at um what siobhan was saying in the chat about um a, a previous slide but i feel like it's relevant to what you were just talking about as far as purpose and vision because sometimes as a as we prepare for our kingdom assignment um, there are people that we may serve along with, or maybe we may serve that that ministry or whatever um, to prepare for our kingdom assignment. But then when God gives us our kingdom assignment, then they're still asking us, can you do this? Can you do that? And we don't really have time. So she talks about um, when, when our purpose is it's clear. Our vision is clear. Our mission is clear. We know our values and God begins to position us. We're going to have to start saying no. We're, we're going to have yeah. to start establishing an order in our lives. Um, this is what, so check out um, what Shavana said in the chat. Um, it is completely okay to put your kingdom assignment first because that's what God has told you to do. So if you are a member of a ministry and they're telling you to do um, something to support the, their kingdom assignment, but it is not in alignment with what God has told you to do, then you need to be okay with saying no, because that is what Jesus would do. He would not yes. let anybody stand in between him and his father's business. Even yes. when he said, when it was the, the situation where it was time to go to the cross and he's like, no, you can't leave. He's like, no, Satan, get behind me because that is literally the enemy at work at that. You know, may not be the person doesn't really have ill intentions for you, but it's like if they're standing away between your kingdom, even if it's me, anybody that I'm asking, I try to be very careful with Coach Maria, relationship strategies, anybody that is um, serving along with me. If this get, if I ask you to do something and it, it is not in alignment with your kingdom assignment, tell me no, please, because yeah. <laughs> I do not want to stand in um in front of or it, i don't want to distract you in any way with what god has told you to do another thing that she said also in the chat is um line up with the word ex instead of expecting the word to line up with you um so this all of these things all these principles helps us to actually position ourselves in our purpose and actually it helps us to stay motivated i'm gonna make this slide a little bigger um and we'll come back in a minute as we're talking about motivation because we talked about this earlier so you were i don't remember who it was in the chat was talking about motivation but motivation was in the chat earlier um yeah. and i know a lot of people um what they they say they struggle with motivation i know my students um at one of the schools they really had the spirit of heaviness all through that school like it was bad i was like jesus like it was extreme um and they i would ask them because that is just one of my uh a part of my kingdom assignment is I'm um, supporting people in, you know, getting motivated and things like that. So, of course, I go from school to school to school and it's the same thing. I need motivation. I need motivation. So what I found is there are uh, two different types of uh, motivation, extrinsic and intrinsic uh, motivation and extrinsic motivation. 
everybody's motivated. Let me tell you this. Before we like break this down, <laughs> everybody is motivated to do what you want to do. So sometimes <laughs> it's that you haven't disciplined yourself. Everybody's not disciplined, but everybody is motivated. So I don't even want to hear it anymore. I've like, even with my students, cause I was really entertaining it. Like, yeah, maybe they need motivation. And I was like, let's do motivation Monday. Like I was really, you know, doing everything I could when it comes to motivation, but that is not the problem. The problem is that what Siobhan is lighting up the chat with these comments, I'm loving them. You are definitely great in making sure that we're uh, Holy Spirit led. The problem is we're not Holy Spirit led. That's why we're not motivated right because that's our why what is your why that's it for motivation we're gonna break it down a little further because we know i'm i'm called to the intellectuals right um I'm intellectual with the little hood um basically so when it comes to motivation is because you are not connected to the holy spirit Anytime you're not motivated to do your kingdom assignment or whatever, you are not connected the way he needs you to be. But let's break down it, extrinsic, two different types of motivation, the extrinsic motivation or intrinsic motivation. Which one do you want to take, Coach Maria? Um, I'll take the intrinsic. OK, so I'm going to talk about extrinsic motivation. What this looks like is you are encouraged by Coach Maria. You're encouraged by Coach D. Um, you're encouraged by relationship strategists. You're encouraged, right? Um, we come on and we say some things and you feel good and you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I am loving this. This is good. You go to church, you're encouraged by your bishop. You're encouraged by the pastor. You're encouraged, but then it's like you're it's like a balloon it's you're you're blown up and then the air seeps out right um because you are drawn to the reward so we're we're motivating you in this um this training because we're like okay you're gonna break this cycle of um procrastination you're not lazy what you're being spiritually attacked you've been traumatized you know you're feeling real good like you know what the devil is a liar so you're feeling pretty good you're like you're like yeah. okay okay um you're feeling great right this is mm -hmm. extrinsic motivation but most studies show that extrinsic motivation is more efficient in the short run so yes you'll feel good right now um when we do we do um that soul detox you'll feel great because we're gonna come on every day and we're gonna talk about the goodness of the lord we're gonna decree and declare what thus saith the lord we are going to to focus on his goodness and all of that you're gonna feel great but um then you're like okay what are my rewards what am i getting out of it you really do feel better you really do feel better you may be accomplishing maybe you want that degree maybe that's your thing or you want that that thriving business or you want that that the bank account um i know i do um you want that uh you can feel free to type it in the chat what is it that you're looking for um that extrinsic um motivation what what's that reward that recognition you see all kinds of recognition on facebook you want this award you want to be recognized I, one of my main motivations as far as HD was concerned. It was extrinsic. It wasn't intrinsic. Coach Marie is going to talk about what intrinsic looks like. So I was a little, I was a little off with that. Now that I'm going for it again and I'm close to getting it again, I I realized that my motivation was not in the right place. I wanted that extrinsic reward, that re recognition. And the the thing about it, it is when you are extrinsically motivated then you'll participate in whatever it is this slide says a sport but you'll participate in it may be a ministry it may be on your job it may be an actual sport um it may be you might have the sport of goal setting coaches y'all know y'all guilty of this <laughs> because you set goal after goal after goal and for what like is are these things about your kingdom assignment or are you just setting a goal just to set a goal yes. so y'all ain't even got to tell me because i already know what it is <laughs> the coaches that's what y'all do is y'all just set 
go after go. Y'all is me, okay? So <laughs> set go after go after go after go, and that is your sport. That's not of God per se. God, um, He tells us to. The, the, there's principles He tells us to live by, but it's not just like to check. I did that check i did that he's not trying to give us this long list of things to do he wants us to rest in him he wants us to be focused on him so he wants us to not necessarily be per pursuing this award um unless our, our reward in heaven that's it like heavenly thing but not the things of this world. And that's how we get it a little twisted. So Maria is gonna talk about the kind of motivation that really we really need to have and what God wants us to be, like how he wants us to be motivated. This is motivation, it comes from within. It's that, it comes from your soul. It's that soul desire to do whatever it is that you're doing. And that's, I love this part of it. When I got to this part of it, it was beautiful for me. Um, when I set out to do something, it's that motivation. It's like, I'm not looking for motivation. It just comes. It's there. It keeps me pushing. I'm motivated to, you know what I'm saying, do this task that's at hand solely because I'm getting satisfaction out of it, not for the reward it carries. I'm satisfied with my purpose coaching me every time an individual that works with me finds their purpose and they can start walking in it. That's the satisfaction for me. It's not a reward. It's not the, it's not the, any of that is just that satisfaction from the heart um, effective in the long run because it comes from internal I don't need to sit around with individuals and have them hype me up like they say you don't need no you better hype your bestie up that's how I can do for myself I like to throw that out there a little bit a little bit of humor but it comes from internal I'm drawn to it for long term I'll do this forever because I am internally happy internally motivated um, I not it's not has nothing to do with pride. It's intangible. It uh, always comes with no. Sometimes it comes with no financial gain. Some of the things I do in my now has no financial gain, and I'm with it. But I'm still motivated to do it every day. You're motivated just to push forward because it's like I said, it comes from the soul. It actually comes from God. It's sitting right there. It's like I'm doing kingdom work, and it feels so good. Um, I participate in the game and not for the reward. I participate in it to help coaches like Coach D and, you know, this um, relationship strategist. We're all working together, coming together from something that's grown with, from within us to bring in God's kingdom. So that's for me, that's for in, in, the intri intrinsic motivation solely from my soul. Coach D? I missed it. I was like, are you, are you done? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I, I was like talking and I was not um, unmuted. So I was just making sure that we we're finished with this one. Um, so another thing in the comments, oftentimes is closely related to your passion and purpose. And that's why it comes natural. So if you're wanting to be like more like coach Maria, when it comes to your kingdom assignment, um, the more that you know your purpose um, and you know your 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 what you're passionate about, it it starts to become a lot really really natural for you. Um, and yeah, purpose. So a lot of people um, that are here, let's go ahead and put everybody. A lot of people who are here are intrinsically um, motivated, and we're just cultivating that. So we're here for. Uh, the tips as far as how to how do we focus? How do we um, get? I, I got to make this screen a little bigger so you can all see. Um, what what are some things that we can do to help us to focus? I know someone earlier in the chat um, they said they have to have complete silence. Um, I know for me, I don't always have to have complete silence. It really just depends. Um, but a lot of people, 95% of people say that they struggle to focus when it's time to really get some real work done. Um, so sometimes it's like that your area is not clear. So um, 
one of the things that I do, because uh, a lot of my stuff, I'm a creative type. So if you come into my space, um, you'll, you're you going to see all that creativity um, a little bit here, a little bit there, especially <laughs> if it's like in a school or even if it's an office setting or whatever, um, then I'll have some things up. Um, and but and sometimes I'll have different things on my desk. I know where everything is. It doesn't look like I do, but I know where everything is. But when I really want to focus, I clean all that up. Like I will yeah. clean all that up when I really need to focus. So if you're the creative type and you're like, oh, I know where all my stuff is. I get it. But if you're really <laughs> trying to focus, clean all that stuff up. You might have to actually turn off your phone. Um, I know Siobhan is like, oh no, Shadita got her do not disturb sign. That is because <laughs> uh, she can't even call me sometimes because my do not disturb thing is on. So I will call you because <laughs> I don't want to be distracted by um, my yeah, phone. Yeah, I definitely leave you a message when I see that. <laughs> oh yeah like i just you know the bedtime and all of that stuff is so important because it all kind of works um together it all works together you might have to shut off everything that's what um siobhan is saying in the chat uh, as well where you just need <laughs> silence sometimes yes. i have had to when i was like on the grind earlier this first the first time i went on a phd journey i have tried putting my phone in a separate room so then that way, because I didn't want to have to, you know, walk all the way in that room to get it. So it was unlikely that I'm going to just reach over to my phone because sometimes it's just a habit to just grab your grab your phone. Um, another thing is I think I'm going to pass some of these over time for yourself. Um, so one of the major strategies, I don't think I have them. Um, I don't have this tip in here. Or I don't think I do. But one of the major strategies, I do this for students and I also do it for myself. If it's something I really don't want to do, then I'll time it. I'll do like 20 minutes and I'll work for 20 minutes. I've done this with... Um, which one is that? Um, I'm trying to think. Lakia, she is, we do have a, a team of people that pray for uh, or keep us in our prayers. So mm -hmm. Lakia is um, one of the prayer warriors for the Morning You team. So me, her and I, we've done that before where we're just doing work sessions together. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's another thing that you could do um, to help you focus. So if you kind of get a buddy, this is not on the slide, but if you get a buddy, that and you um actually have work sessions together and you set goals together so that way you don't have to necessarily hire a coach you could just yeah. actually um use the coach approach to your life um and i'm, I'm gonna pass it over to, to coach maria to uh for her to share some tips with you mine is um i love a good chair especially if i know i'm gonna be sitting at my desk for a while a good chair suffice it makes me comfortable uh, my, my chair vibrates. So after a while, if I get, you know, tired of sitting, it gives me something else to think about the vibration going through my body. Um, I also make a list. Everything I do is on a to-do list. I make a to-do list every Sunday. So it helps me stay focused and I can do a to-do list with 20 things on it. It might take me two weeks. It might take me a week as long as I have that list. And another thing that I want to touch um, on is reward yourself. Make sure you re reward yourself for every accomplishment that you've done. And therefore, like, you're back to yourself. You're taking time for yourself. You're spending time with yourself. But you get a reward for it. So it kind of motivates me, too, to stay focused. So those are the couple things that I like to do. And most importantly, like you said, Dietrich, cleaning my desk. That OCD kicks in and everything has to be exactly in order. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shivana cracks me up. She was over here talking about your chair. She said she would be asleep. <laughs> She was like, I would be sleep. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think where I sit is not as big of a deal for some people, but I've seen at work, they will bring in those fancy chairs. Like some people don't play about those chairs. So yeah, that it just, you got to do whatever good works chair. for you. Yes. Yeah. You have to do whatever works for you um, and whatever is important for you. So I would yeah. say, choose a couple of these things. So type a couple mm -hmm. of these things in the chat, one or two um, that you want to do. I know, I feel like I've gotten my phone under control. I still do. Um, I do make the list. Um, I, I think one of the things 
that I need to do, I don't want to, y'all, but <laughs> I need to do is shut off everything. Shut Ooh. off everything and just work. And then see what can, I get done. Can, can we do that together so we hold each other accountable? Yeah, we can do some work sessions. <laughs> we can do some work sessions because I, I like to have a TV on. I know one of my mentors was like, the TV? Like, girl, you know. <laughs> Um, he didn't say girl was uh, Dr. Knox. Um, <laughs> but he was trying to help me through the dissertation and I told him that the TV was on and he was like, what are you doing? doing? So, yeah, like so. So, so yeah, um, that is something I'm going to pray about when we'll do these, you know, these sessions, these like work sessions, kingdom assignment <laughs> sessions um, where we'll be working on. We can share what our goal is. If anybody wants to do this, it'll motivate me to organize it if you tell me that you want to do it. Otherwise, I'll pray about it. We'll do it when we do it. But um, <laughs> what we could do is at the very beginning of that session, um, we could say, these are what our goals are. Okay, the clock is starting and yes. then go. And then we'll check back in and say, how far did you get? So. Yes. Um, especially for people, some people like to do this for writing books. Um, some people like for me, you know, I do these trainings every month. Um, oh my God, Siobhan, yeah, we're gonna definitely. So we can do it for <laughs> we can do it for Thank whatever you. it is that we want to do. So <laughs> that God is telling us to do. So she's um, she's a relationship strategist. She's also um, getting certified as a therapist. So that's a kingdom assignment right there. Yes. Um, I'm doing Christian coaching um, and um, counseling. So that's kingdom assignment. So even though I've got one certification, I'm getting um, the last one I think that I'll get until um, my uh, old people goals. So I have old people goals too. But like my goal right now, this is the last one, the PhD in Christian counseling. Um, no, uh, you, you wouldn't be a distraction because you got uh, two minutes to make your little jokes. Uh, she <laughs> said, never mind, I'll be a distraction. No, no we, we got, we'll have like a quick check-in and then we will work and then we have and to check, check in back again. In. Uh, what'd you say? I said, and then check back in. <laughs> yes, and that will be what we will do is we'll check yes. back in. Did you get it done? Um, so we'll we'll figure that out as the Lord leads. Um, that's why I like um, doing these trainings because it, it's just truly a blessing yes. so that we can be more productive. And you don't have to do this with us. Um, if you want to do it with us, then shoot us a, a message and let us know that you want to do this with us. Um, and if you don't necessarily um, want to do it with us, I suggest you do that with somebody. Find you a group. Build your team. Yeah, build build a uh, a new routine of <laughs> accountability check ins. Yeah, well, a lot of us we've been through like undergrad and stuff like that, um, but we still need some of those study sessions, you know, because yeah. used to do that in undergrad where you get together. I didn't really do a whole lot of that, um, but it's not because it wasn't effective for sure. Yeah, I'm not um, going back until August of this year. Like, well, uh, quarter. I'm gonna go get my mask. I got three years. Yeah, I mean that. <laughs> so we will support you the whole way, um, the whole way through. Because there's a lot of people that are going back to school, and when you're older, it's like you're not um, necessarily connected to the yeah. group that you're going to school with. So you kind of got to create your own community. Um, <laughs> She's a mess. She said, uptight uptight people, people don't apply. Don't apply. <laughs> Siobhan, you gonna make people uh, apply for this? I'm not see I I it depends if if we have more than 10 people I love small groups so if we have um more than a few people that are interested then we might have to make people apply and Siobhan will be reviewing the applications <laughs> Look, um, there's, there's no fee for this <laughs> um but yes she will be reviewing applications <laughs> Because um, we do need to to create these new routines. Yes. Um, this is an example. It's not on this slide, um, but this could be a new routine for us. And I think it will be effective because I have an idea for how I want to um, slowly finish the, the dissertation. Um, so yeah. I like to work on that. And 
maybe even updating. I told you guys earlier, like all the stuff that I do is not on the website, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, updating um, our class schedules and all kinds of stuff that I haven't done. And it will be nice to do it within community. So creating a new routine. So we're going to get out of the, for example, I told you in the morning where I'm like all over the place sometimes, no <laughs> watching YouTube videos in the morning. Like that is one of my new rules. Okay. Um, <laughs> no watching YouTube because I love to learn. So I'm just distracted by that. Um, so <laughs> the reward is disconnect from work and then recharging, right? Um, yeah. so sometimes like this, I'm not even following, um, this slide. So let me actually follow the slide. So the cue is you get home and then your routine is to watch YouTube videos, or maybe it is to scroll through, um, TikTok and your reward is to disconnect from work and to recharge. Maybe this is what you're doing, but we gotta do, we gotta create a new routine. So you get home, you get changed and go to the gym how many people need to work out type that in the chat me <laughs> um so i i've got my workout routine um already figured out but i suggest for the journalers um and we are coming up on the end so i'm gonna um speed it up a little bit for the journalers i do suggest that you actually choose a routine that you have now and that you create a new routine and you could do it like this slide you can go back and um, rewind it and watch the replay so that you can do this activity in your journal where what is your cue and then what's your current routine what's the reward that you're getting out of it currently and then what's the new routine if you need a coach to help you with that um you're like well that's why i offer this as well because maybe you have a coach maybe you already have a counselor or something and you're like this is a cool activity but i don't know how to do it i need some help that's take this activity to them like i know that this is the routine i have can you help me coach maria can you help me relationship strategies to create these new routines? Because maybe this routine is in regards to your your um, relationship. Because like, say you coming in the door, you like to get on the phone and chat a little bit. When you come in the door, get off the phone, ladies, and talk to your husband. Yes. You know, those are the kind of things, like it could be anything. I'm just trying to help you um, to connect all of this. So we're coming up on two hours. Um, so I like to try to end, um, at this time so we're not going to like formally say this prayer but this is a prayer for focus and productivity um asking god ask god to help you to focus on what is currently is in that moment what does he want you to work on how ask him to help you to to connect to him ask him to help you to stay focused Ask him to help you to use your time wisely. Ask him to give you strength, to resist the temptation. This is like the, the very core of you cultivating the kingdom assignment that he is giving you. You've got to pray these things. So sometimes we just get stuck in our heads and we're not praying for focus and productivity. We're just thinking about how not focused we are. So start praying that if you do, do nothing else of all these different tips and all the things we talked about, just pray about it. Just pray about it and God will continuously give you different resources and different people will come into your life to support you with focus and productivity. Now, it does, faith without works is dead. So you do have to do something, but definitely spend that time in prayer. Yes. For sure. Um, the next steps, and I'll pass it to you um, I, after um, I get finished with this slide, Coach Maria, for any of your um, final thoughts. But the next steps, like after we talked about all these things of breaking the cycle of procrastination, and you're like, yeah, that was some good information, but I don't know if I can do this. Like, I don't know if I can actually pray about this and just put these things in place on my own. Then I do suggest that you connect with a therapist um i i know that there's so many people online but you really have to connect with somebody that you resonate with um it could be a minister at your church um it could be a counselor 
It could be um, a mentor. I know my mentor, uh, Miss Ella, she's uh, stood in the gap um, a lot of times because I didn't feel, I didn't always feel connected to the church. I didn't, but I, I felt connected to Miss Ella, who is also a minister. So I would, she, she's my mentor and who I reach out to for things like this. Like I'm having trouble um, focusing and she would give me words of wisdom for that. It could be a strategist because if you want an actual a plan to be put in place and you want accountability and you do better with structure, then that's where you want to do something more formal. But most of all, you want to get clear about your purpose. So I know a lot of the people that we serve are clear about their purpose and people like that, you might want to get the soul therapy, um, healing soul wounds. There is a workbook that can take you through um, some of the stuff that you've experienced when it comes to the trauma so that you can actually um, start moving through that stuff, that spirit of heaviness and all of that. You can start moving through that and you won't be so tempted to um, stay stuck in this cycle of procrastination and God will begin to break the things off of you. Um, and actually, this is what I call soul care training. So we do this as um, it, it's a form of service for discipleship and showing you how we've grown and what God has done um, in our lives. But if you want things to be like more formal, then you would want to actually get um, enrolled in an actual program. So um, I'm going to pass it over to, to Coach Maria. We're, we're, we're wrapping it up here. So she's going to share her final words and share how um, to connect with her um, and her services and all of that. I will say once again, um, like I said before, acknowledgement is half the process. If you can acknowledge that you have an issue with procrastination, then you're going to get the tools and, you know, go through the tutorials and everything to help you deal with that. And also know that it could be other things. It could be from trauma. It could also be from the um, ADHD or different physical things that we have going on in our lives. It doesn't have to always strictly be procrastination. It could be other things feeding into that. So just being mindful of that and just knowing that you have Coach D, you have other coaches out there, you have other mentors out there. You got to see who resonates with you. You have to see who you can work through these processes with, who you can take it from and, you know what I'm saying, relate with to take these tips and apply these tips and they can work with you. And we're all here to help. And I'm just glad that that in and you know, with this webinar with us and everything. And you can reach me as at, I'm sorry, the-hccf.com. That's my website. It's the healthcare consulting firm, but my coaching and everything is there because I do all of that to feed into my consulting firm so I can give some of my service away for free. Um, and that's Maria Mock, the 3 P specialist. Thanks, Coach D. Of course. Um, and she's also in the Facebook group. If you're like, I didn't catch all of that. Um, you just remember uh, Maria Mock and you can look her up and she's in the, um, the Facebook group, I believe. Um, yes. Or ask me and I'll give you her information if you're like, I don't remember. Uh, but what do I do um, with more in you, the programs? We do have um, leadership coaching. Siobhan and I will be rolling out some things I'm thinking in the summer. Um, I feel like this is something I was like, the procrastination, but it's really not procrastination. The The to-do list is too long, but um, the leadership uh, coaching will be coming up. So if you're interested in that, I do need to know. Um, I know there's been a couple of people that have told me that they do want um, to go through um, certification with um, with us. So um, we're, we're going to start doing some things more formal with that, with the more in you leadership coaching. Soul therapy, um, this is a method that I'm writing my um, dissertation on. And I absolutely, I'm so passionate about it because I haven't seen it out there, obviously. Um, but uh, if you did not watch the Soul Therapy uh, Masterclass, go back and watch that. So you'll see what I'm talking about with what Soul Therapy is. But it's basically a form of Christian counsel, um, counseling with a coach approach. So um, that is offered right at this time. I pretty much will refer people to Coach um, Maria or the relationship strategists are like my first two people on the team that I'll refer you to um, right now. Because, uh, But if it's somebody that God is like, I want you to work with this person, then I will. So you just have to reach out. 
um, just to see if it if it's going to be a good fit. The information um, is featured at the top as far as um, at, in the, the featured section of the group. If you do want to apply um, to work with um, within one of the programs, otherwise, then come back for our next um, training because we'll do another training next month. Um, so you can keep this is a part of the soul care process. So I'm I'm really um, excited about um, just continuously doing these um, and seeing what happens in your life as a result. Um, so I want to thank you. Uh, we did go over like a little 10 minutes a little over, but um, for the replay people, it probably doesn't matter because they'll just pause and keep wa watching whenever they can. Um, uh, I am on Instagram uh, as at Maureen You Coach. Um, it's yeah, a little situation. I got to get that figured out. So it probably looks a little messy, but it's all good. Um, and then you already know where to find me because you are in the Facebook group. But if you're watching this like on YouTube or something, then join the Facebook group. Thank you, Siobhan. And then we are on Clubhouse. The Morning You Club is on Clubhouse. And then we also um, have a house on Clubhouse as well. Um, so you'll see see me and um, the ladies will pop in there sometimes. If you're wanting to like chat and actually talk to us, that's the easiest thing to do. And then you can also send an email. So if this um, blessed you or you want to support the ministry and what we're doing, because if you didn't know, there are fees involved with doing things. Um, I know I paid a boatload for my education <laughs> as far as... <laughs> um trying to you know get the skills to be able to provide this information to you so if you want to um send a donation um then you can cash out to um, more in you or if you 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 could go to the website um i know that paypal does um take a fee and it's a whole big thing through paypal but we but you can um also donate um that way but if you are like the way your budget is set up it's not running like that what you could do is um, you could share this. So if you're like, I was really impacted, but I really just don't have any cash in my budget to give to the more new ministry, then just share it out um, with somebody because I appreciate um, that as well. Or comment and say something like um, what Siobhan said, great training ladies, that is currency as well. Yes, that is giving of yourself. So we gave all this to you. So um, the least you could do is to say something encouraging if you can't give a donation and you don't feel comfortable sharing for whatever reason, um, then try to make sure that um, you support support in one way, shape, form, or another. We really appreciate it. And we'll go back and look through the comments because I know sometimes people can't comment right away. Um, but yeah, we appreciate you sharing and getting the, getting the word out. Um, but yeah, that is officially the end of our training. And um, thank you for staying with us all the way to the end. Always remember that there's more in you and watch out for the next training because it will be at the end of next month. So you don't um, want to miss it because we already talked about it's going to be breaking the cycle of self-sabotage. So that's going to be really fun. But always remember there's more in you, um, not because of you, but because God is in you. So we're going to go ahead and end the broadcast. Love you with the love of Christ.